Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, a fourth year medical resident specializing in rheumatology. Now I've done a lot of exams in high school, undergrad, med school, residency, and nobody really tells you how to study properly. So in this video, I'm going to be going through the best scientifically proven study strategies to help you ace your exams. So if you're somebody who rereads passages, underlines things, copies out notes, you really need to keep watching this because there are better strategies that are going to save you a lot of time. Okay, so let's first step back and ask a simple question. What's the goal of studying? You're probably thinking, well, I want to get the information from my textbook into my head. And that's what I used to think. But now I think of it a little bit differently. I want to get information into my head in a way that I can retrieve it later. Because just having a whole bunch of facts in my brain from studying isn't helpful if I can't access it when I'm trying to write a test or if I'm on the wards looking out for a patient or if you're just playing Jeopardy. Like this needs to be information that you can access when you need it. So this brings up an important concept rote learning versus meaningful learning. And you can already tell by the name that meaningful learning is what you want. But let's break it down. Rote memory is just simply repeating something until you can memorize it. And that's your classic cramming before a test. And it works for a short period of time. It doesn't help with long-term memory, organizing things in your brain, connecting old and new information, and it doesn't help you solve new problems. So there are some serious limitations. Even though this isn't the best study strategy, it's the number one study strategy among university students. 85% of students that were surveyed said that they reread and reread their notes and textbooks multiple times to study. And over 50% of them say that's their number one study strategy. Meaningful learning is the opposite. It's active learning where you're constantly testing yourself. So self quizzing to tell your brain to go and retrieve information. So it's kind of like playing fetch with a dog. You ask a question, your brain hurries to go and get that information and bring it back to you. And every time you do that, that pathway gets stronger. So that next time when you're on a test and that question is asked, the information is right there for you. Your brain knows where to find it. This type of learning promotes long-term memories, well-organized information in your mind, connections between concepts, and the ability to transfer this knowledge to solve problems. So you would think that everybody would be using these strategies, but in that same survey of university students, only 11% of students were using self-testing as a study strategy, and only 1% said that was their primary form of studying. So this tells me that students are way more focused on getting information into their brain and less focused on how are they going to retrieve it? How are they going to use this information? Personally, I think that students see tests and quizzes as an evaluation tool and they get nervous because they want to do well, which makes sense. But that's a mistake. Science actually tells us that testing helps to encode information and helps produce long term memories. So testing should be an active part of the studying process, not something you leave right till the end. So this was actually proven by psychologists who did an experiment on university students. They divided the students up into three groups and gave them the same passage to read. Group one was given four short study periods to read the passage as many times as possible. They read it about 14 times each. The second group was given three study periods and a practice quiz they read the passage about 10 times. And the third group was only given one study period and instead had three quizzes. They only read the passage about three times. They were tested on how much they remembered after five minutes and then after one week. After five minutes, group one remembered the most. This is like the cramming group. They read it and read it and read it and read it. Cramming, it's good for short term memory but it's group three that remember the most after a week. They had multiple quizzes that helped encode that information and give them longer term memory. So hopefully this convinces you that quizzing yourself is really important to have long lasting memory, which is what you want. Otherwise, the studying is kind of a waste. The second critical strategy is called space repetition. 
it just means that you want to space out your studying so you don't just do it all in one chunk. It's pretty intuitive. So don't do five hours of math on Sunday. Instead, do 20 to 30 minutes per day. You'll remember a lot more. So now you know it, the winning ultimate combination for studying, self-testing plus space repetition. And guess what? There is a free flashcard app called Anki that uses both of these strategies built right into it. The flashcards, of course, are making you self-test and then they have a built-in algorithm that goes through a um, space repetition. So let's say you're looking at a card and it's really easy. So you won't have to look at that card again for another couple of days, maybe four days, maybe a week. If, it's, if you got the question wrong, it's hard, you can't retrieve that information from your brain, well, then you're gonna be seeing that question in a couple more minutes to drill it into you. So this is not a sponsored video, but as you can tell, I personally use it, I believe in this app, and so that's why I'm recommending it. Okay, so now that we've covered the science of it, I'm gonna share what I actually do setting up and studying for an exam. So, step one is always the plan. I start off with an overarching plan. How many days until the test? How many topics do I have to study? Which topics am I really kind of weak on? Because I know I wanna study those ones first. I also create a daily plan. Sometimes I do that the night before, so I know kind of what time I need to wake up. <laughs> um, and then sometimes I do it in the morning. But basically, I'm setting realistic goals about what I want to achieve that day. I try not to add in too much because it just feels crappy by the end of the day if you feel like you failed to check off everything on the list. So if you're trying to be ambitious, add in a bonus section so that you don't feel badly that you didn't accomplish everything. Next, I go through the content once. So whether that's reading through the textbook or listening to a lecture. Then step three is to make your Anki cards. Um, there's so much to say about this, but basically try to keep the answers relatively short because if you have to go through a huge long answer, it kind of slows you down when you're going through your flashcards later. Step four is drawing out concepts by memory. So another way of retrieving information. And I find that particularly useful when there's like a complex diagram or a complex concept that can't really fit well onto a cue card. Um, and actually most recent exam that I was writing was the internal medicine licensing exam. And there are a lot of these like decision making algorithms that you have to memorize. So uh, each morning, the week leading up to the exam, I'd come downstairs and just write out these algorithms or like, I don't know, 12 of them maybe. And every morning before opening a book, just to see what I could remember. And it just drilled those concepts in really well. Step five is following through on the space repetition. And that just means doing Anki every day. So just build it into your routine. And don't forget about practice problems, whether that's um, a question bank or they have published previous exams, make sure you go through every old question you can get your hands on. It's valuable to see how questions are worded and to see if you're focusing on the right information. The last thing I wanna mention is time management. Oh, this is, could be a whole video, a whole topic in itself. But the short version is you can't multitask. Not well, none of us can. Our brains just don't work that way. So you really wanna give your full attention to studying when you're studying. So turn your phone on silent, turn off the notifications on your computer, on your phone, and just focus. Now there are times that none of us wanna study and that happens to me quite a lot. And you really have to play tricks on your brain. So what I always say is just do five minutes. Five minutes, you can do five minutes and really mean it. If you happen to do more than that, you get in the groove, wonderful. But otherwise, five minutes is better than no minutes. Anyway, that's something my dad taught me and I have used it for most of my life with a lot of success. So self-testing and space repetition. Do you wanna hear something really crazy? So over 120 years ago, William James, one of the great American philosophers and psychologists was already talking about this. You now see why cramming must be so poor a mode of study. Cramming seeks to stamp things in by intense application immediately before the ordeal. But a thing thus learned can form but few associations. 
On the other hand, the same thing recurring on different days, in different contexts, read, recited on, referred to again and again, and related to other things and reviewed, gets well wrought into the mental structure. This is the reason why you should enforce on your pupils habits of continuous application. So there you go, something from 120 years ago that's just as applicable today. So I think it's about time that we actually start implementing this. Don't you? If you study more effectively, you're going to have better results and you're going to have more free time to do the things that you love. So let me know in the comments below if you've used these strategies already or if you have other suggestions. And if you're interested in reading up on some of the studies I was talking about, I've left links to all the articles below in the description. Otherwise, I'll be seeing you in the next video. So good luck studying and bye for now.